Well, hello there, friends. Beef broccoli with a French chef. <laughs> You're going to love it, I promise. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell. Stay tuned, friends. We're making it together. Beef broccoli. Well, hello there, friends. Beef broccoli today by a French chef. <laughs> You're going to love it, I promise you. Very simple recipe, friends. For this recipe, I am using a, a strip. You could use a skirt steak, you could use a flank steak, you could use whatever steak you want. I find then, since we're going to cook it really, really quick, uh, the strips cooks wonderful. But use whatever meat you want. If you use a flank steak or a skirt steak, um, make sure you use it and cut it against the grain, okay? You may want to watch the video on the skirt steak then we did to show you exactly how to do it in case you want to do it perfectly. But this is different recipe. So I got the strips here. What I'm going to do, friends, I'm just going to clean it up a little bit, remove some of that, because remember, it's kind of like a stir fry. So we don't need, uh, a lot of you want to keep that fat, then you can like, certainly keep it if you want. But, you know, with the fat, fat comes some silver skin on the outside. And it's not always pleasant on the stir fry. So I remove it. But it's really up to you, my friends. You want to leave it on there, just leave it on there. Don't worry about a thing. It's really up to you. If it's just a little fat, I don't mind. It's going to melt. I just don't want the, uh, the nerve in the connecting tissue right there if it's too tough. See? So right there. And then what we're going to do, we're going to cut it very, very thin, okay? I have a slicer for that, which makes it easier. Very, very thin, my friends. I'm telling you, this is like uh, super important and you cut it thin, otherwise it's gonna be tough. Now, a strips is nice, and that's why I like to use it, because it's gonna, it, no, even if you cook it very little, uh, it's actually very nice, and you cook it a lot, it's still not gonna get tough, you see? So I cut a little bit of an angle, and we don't want it to be too big, because otherwise, you know, you go in there, you're going to have to cut it, and you don't want to have to cut. That's why I'm cutting it very thin, you see? And then what we're going to do, we're going to marinate it a little bit. Not very long, maybe like 30 minutes. And uh, we're going to give it some flavor, and we're going to tenderize it a little bit. So we got a few tricks in here that I'm going to give you. And, uh, and then we're going, to, um, we're going to do a little bit of mise en place together. I'm going to do some, because sometimes I prepare it in advance, but then I don't show you some of the tricks. And so I'm going to do a little bit of it today. So the video might not be a very short video. I mean, we're not going to make it too long, but I want to show you a few tricks in here. So like I say, I said, at this point, you can put all the fat if you want in there. The fat, I don't mind, like I said. Right here, it's a little too greasy for me, so I just cut it right there on the side. And that right there. I cook it for the dog, he loves it. We'll put that right in it, so now, here what we're gonna do. We're gonna put this on the side. I have my always sanitized water, you know, I use that sanitized water that I have. You can put white vinegar in there, I can put, I put a, a, a soup so or almost nothing of bleach just to clean, to sanitize my hand all the time. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna prepare a little marinated here, friend, a little marinated. We're gonna put an egg in here, which will help us bind everything together. Then we're gonna put a little cornstarch. We're gonna put just about a tablespoon of cornstarch, a very little amount of cornstarch. We're gonna put some more in the sauce. And then we're gonna put a little bit of baking soda. That's a trick that I learned years and years ago from uh, a Chinese chef that used to work for me in my kitchen. He wanted to learn French cuisine, and I wanted to learn Chinese cuisine. And uh, his name is Mike, and he taught me this. He said, uh, the baking soda um, helps keep the meat more moist and more tender. Uh, and um, uh, it helps the uh, milk protein from binding too quick together and removing too much moisture, so it keeps it nice and moist and, and tenderized. Just very little. There's a half a teaspoon of baking soda. It raises the pH level on the surface of the meat and makes it more tender. So with this, we're going to put a little bit of a soy sauce. I use a tamari right here, very little. We don't want to make it too wet, and that's why we got the cornstarch in there. Then we're also gonna put some uh, uh, acidity to activate the, the um, uh, baking soda, just a little bit. So I'm using a, a um, uh, apple cider vinegar. You can use a, um, uh, this is actually a sherry vinegar, sherry vinegar, beautiful, 25 years old. You can put any vinegar that you want. I'm putting a touch of toasted sesame oil, a little bit of sesame oil, 
you know, I see I'm not really measuring her carefully. And uh, a little bit of uh, Worcestershire sauce, just a couple of drops right there. And we're gonna mix, we're gonna mix all this up, friends. Really, really, really good, you see? Make sure you blend everything together. And then we're gonna marinate that meat right there. You see, it's getting thick because of the cornstarch. And, uh, and then it's gonna marinate all this right there, you see? And uh, we're gonna do this, we're gonna mix this together really, really good now. Mix it all up together, you see? And then we're gonna let that go for about 30 minutes. And in 30 minutes from now, we're gonna stir fry it really quick with some vegetables. And we're gonna go over, I'm gonna do a little prep of the vegetables with you right now. It's gonna take a few minutes, okay? And, uh, and that's all we do right here. Don't be afraid to put your, you do it with your hand right there. I got my wet rag right here. I'm gonna clean my hand. I'm gonna sanitize my cutting board, my knife, so I have a clean surface to work with. And uh, I'm gonna put this in the fridge. So then while it's in the fridge, getting cool, <laughs> always trying to find some room in the fridge. Not exactly easy, my friends. Here you go. All right, so we're gonna clean this up one more time. I'm gonna give it a nice wash. And this is my soapy water, my sanitized water that I have here. For those of you that are wondering what it is, it's about a gallon and a half of water. I put a little bit of soap and I put like a, a nothing of bleach. Like um, you can't even smell it. I don't smell it more in my pool water, but it's enough to sanitize and also put some white vinegar in there if you want. So I have a nice sanitized water, okay? It's very important for us to stay clean. So now, the vegetables, friends. I got boiling water going right there, and I'm gonna put some broccoli. I just wanted to show you how I prepare them. So, uh, uh, water right there, we're gonna put a little bit of salt in there. I'm not really measuring the salt, but I don't, my hands are slightly wet, so I don't wanna go in there with my salt, I'll have to wash my hands again, otherwise I don't measure it. Eh? Uh, boiling water, and I got ice water. Remember, friends. When you put the vegetables, you're going to blanch them really quick because you can't just cook a broccoli in a wok. You see a lot of people do that. <laughs> Don't do it, okay? And vegetables like that needs to be rehydrated. It needs water. So what we're going to do, we're going to blanch them. We're going to shock them in boiling water as soon as this is boiling. And then we're going to put them in ice water as soon as they cook to our liking. And then, uh, to our liking, and then we're going to wait and we're going to use them later on. So how do we cut the broccoli? Very simple. Yeah, I see a lot of people going there with a the knife. Don't do it this way. Take a paring knife right here, friends. And, and I hope the camera is going to be able to get me right there. But you see what I do is I go like this, friends. You see? You guys got me over there? Oh, yes. They got me right there. You see? I want to make sure that they got me. See what I do is I go. I don't go from the top. I go from underneath. So I get the florette. You see? Because we don't want to. We want to try to cut. We want to try to avoid to cut the florette if we can. So right here, it's pretty cool, right? Because they're little, right? Get in there, they're little. That's how we're perfect right there, see? Now, when you get to the end, the end over there, then that's okay. You go like this, boom, 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 and you got this, okay? So we'll deal with this in a minute. Now, how do we deal with this? Well, what I like to do with this, I like to remove a little bit of it. See, I remove the leaves of it right there, boom, boom, boom. Believe it or not, a lot of people throw this away. This is my favorite part of the broccoli, my friends. Right there. This is my favorite part of the broccoli, right there. And, and so many people, they throw it away. Don't throw this away. I promise you, this tastes better. We take peel it a little bit. First, roughly, right, right there, right? This, I promise you, my friends, tastes better than this. I promise you. You got to try it. You're, you're going to try it. You're going to say, you know what? I'll never throw it away ever again. All right, and then we're going to cut it like this. Let me take this out of the way so the camera can see. We're going to get rid of the bottom right there. And then what we're going to do, friends, we're not going to peel it. You see? We're going to peel it. See right there? Peel it. Take your time. Take your time. As I'm going fast, I'm telling you to take your time. Take, peel it, peel it, right? Boom, 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 boom. You know, I do this for asparagus. I do this for so many vegetables. If you have never tried it, if you have never done it before, my friends, <laughs> I highly recommend you try it one time. I promise you, you'll never throw it away again. And then what you do, you take your knife and you cut it. And you cut it. You can cut it in a, in a, uh, on the side, but you want to cut it thin. You see the way I'm cutting it, friends? 
you want to cut it thin, because if you don't cut it thin, it's going to take too long to cook, and you want to cook them at the same time. You see? You want to cook them at the same time, like a coin, if you will, you know, a quarter size or whatever size it is, right? And then what we're going to do, we're going to poach all this in boiling water, right? And as soon as it's boiling, now, now, what do we do with the fluoride? Some of them, what do I do with my little paring knife? Huh. You know what? Thank goodness. I got six, seven. Oh, it's right there underneath. Mamma mia. So what I like to do with this right here, I cut it in half. If it's too big, you can cut it a little bit more, but try not to cut it from the other side otherwise you cut too many other florets. And it's, it's no big deal if we, if, we, if we have a little bit of the florette cut, but I just think it looks more elegant if you don't have too much of the little florets or whatever you call those little things in there, right? So what we do, see I had the other part ready, we take them now, we put them in boiling water, and as soon as they are cooked enough, we're gonna put them in, uh, in ice water. The second they cook to your liking, you put them in ice water. Now, I don't like it too cook, but I like it certainly cook enough. I don't like a crunchy um, uh, broccoli, yeah? So, we have it ready right there, my friends. Now, you know what I'm gonna do also with this recipe? I'm gonna put some carrots. I, I've, do, I've used this, uh, this cool little device before I want to show you. You get this on like online. This is $10, $10 tool. And it allows you to make some nice julienne of uh, carrots. Look, see, you take it like this, and you make some juliennes of car carrots. Pretty cool, right? Or you can do this, so you have some juliennes of carrots, or you can take a carrots, and you can do uh, kind of cool decoration. No, no big deal, you know. You take one of those... Uh, I don't know what you call them. The channel, I think, I, I think it's called channel cutter something. Channel uh, knife. Channel knife, that's what it is, right? You, take it, you make a channel in there, one channel, and then you make two channel, and then you make three channel. Hey, okay, let's make four channel. Four channel, okay? And um, now you can certainly eat those. Or, and then what we do, friends, we cut and we have ourselves some cool little carrots that we can put in. Now, carrots, no difference. The, those size, those size carrots right there, those would be kind of cool to actually poach at the same time with your broccoli. Now, the little one right there, we're going to saute those with the meat. But you see those guys right there, friends? Those guys right there are going to be cool. Uh, and we'll just poach them at the same time with the carrots. All right? Then we're going to put some uh, onion. Just a regular onion. Uh, I'm using red onion because I kind of like the color. They're kind of cool. And they're not going to cook very long. So it's not like we need to caramelize them. Remember when you cut the onion, you want to always cut with the line. With the line. See? Always with the line. Not against it. Not against uh, the line. Okay? Le meaning with the grain. You always want to cut it with the grain. I think that's enough right there. And then we just cut those. We cut them in half. You know, it doesn't have to be very precise. This is a stir fry. And we're going to put this. So now we've got our carrots. We've got our onion. We've got our vegetables right there. As soon as those guys are ready, I'm going to take them. I'm going to take them, and I'm going to put them in ice water. Okay? So I do this, and when I come back, I'll have the whole thing clean up. We're going to make a sauce, and we're going to do the stir fry, and we're going to put the vegetables, and we're going to finish it, and we're going to serve with our beautiful uh, jasmine rice. So we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, friends. Well, 30 minutes are marinated. We have our meat right there. The wok is, uh, is ready. You can do it in a fry pan. I have this awesome wok. I love it because if you don't have gas, there is a hot plate underneath. You can put it on electric and it works great. It's nonstick also and it works wonderful. So if you have uh, electric, you have a tough time with some of the woks out there, right? So we're going to take the meat, friends. We're going to put it in here. And we're going to quickly sear it. We're going to expose it to as much as possible of the, of the wok. And uh, we're going to do this uh, relatively uh, fast, and we're going to make a little sauce. Well, the meat is uh, getting some um, uh, a caramelization a little bit. We'll call it a Maya reaction. Yeah, and the caramelization of protein is a nice flavor right there. We're going to put this in there, friends. And then we'll make, um, while this is doing these things, we're going to, Flip it, and then we'll put some onion in the carrots, and we're going to make a little sauce. And in the sauce, we are going to put, of course, some soy sauce. I'm using the tamari right there. 
You want to put a little bit, you can use whatever soy sauce makes you happy. Uh, I'm also going to use a little bit of uh, my toasted sesame oil. Uh, this, this is a beautiful product. And then I found this product the other day, not too long ago, and I hope that I'm going to make it easy for Jack to grab it. Uh, it's called uh, uh, umami. And uh, it's, a, um, it's basically a, a, a tamari with a, a red miso in it. It's kind of cool. I mean, if you can get it, great. If you can't get it, then don't worry about it. It gives it a little, a little umami extra flavor to it. Really, really cool. But if you can't find it, don't worry about it. You know, a good sauce. And then we're going to have oyster sauce. Oyster sauce. Uh, and it's, it's thick. It's going to give us some nice consistency. And um, that's it. So that's our sauce. And then we're going to thick it up with a little bit of cornstarch in a minute. Let's see how we're doing here, friends. Oh, yeah. See, that's what I want. I mean, you see a lot of people, they don't take the time to... Uh, they get some uh, Maillard reaction in it. They, they're kind of boiling it. Uh, I, I don't really like it that way. It's, it's really, you know, I, I love a sear on the meat no matter what. I just think it tastes better. But it's really up to you, my friends. Some people, like I said, don't really care about giving it a, um, a, 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 a nice uh, a sear to it. I think it tastes better. If you could be here, you could smell it. You would go, wow, he's right. That smells amazing. A little bit of the red onion. Probably have too much in here. I'm not going to use it all. We're going to let it do its thing in a minute. Then we're going to put the carrots. Now, the carrots, those are not cooked, but they're going to cook really quick. By the way, a reason why I love to use red onion, friends, is because the, uh, the red onion doesn't require as much cooking as a regular onion. It needs to be car caramelizing. Okay, so that's why I like to use them. Also, in the sauce, friends, we're going to put a little bit of ginger. I, I grate it. If you, don't, if you can't grate it, just smack it on the bowl, the cross, cut it. Uh, against the grain and smack like you would do garlic, same deal. You know, this is a microplane grater that I use for chocolate, I use for cheese. It's really, really, really cool. Let me just uh, flip the meat a little bit, friends. So we get the onion, it gave me some cooking in there. It smells amazing. It really, really smells beautiful. You see, it really, really, really smells. And, and the, the fact that it is a strips doesn't need to be like cremated, you know. and. Uh, and, and we're not going to be poaching it. So I got a little bit of corn starch in here. We're going to wait to put it in uh, until we see what we need. So we don't just put it in in advance without knowing. Because I see that too often. We don't need it to. And then we're going to put a little bit of chopped garlic. I just chopped two cloves of garlic before we started. So I got, I got it right there. I got my, my, my sauce, if you will. Make sure I didn't forget anything. You can also add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, just a little bit, just like, here you go, one, two, three, four, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Measure carefully, friends. All right, so look, very simple, right? It smells amazing. All right, if you could be here right now, friends, you would be amazed of how amazing it smells. I hope you make it. You know, you can make this with chicken. Same deal, same exact deal. Hey, look, see the vegetables are right here, my friends. Look at it. See the carrots and the, and the broccoli? They're cooked already. They're tender, and uh, we're going to heat them up a little bit with the sauce. All right, you ready? Put the sauce in there right there. Let me get a spatula. I like to be ready. Right there, we got a beautiful sauce, friends, you see? Now we're talking. You see, look how gorgeous that is. Look how beautiful that is, friends. And you know, this is right there. This is, this is right there. This, is, uh, this doesn't need anything. Right there. Now you can put it if you wanted the extra sauce. If you wanted extra sauce, my friends, oh, it smells absolutely amazing. You can also put a little bit of beef broth. Some, sometimes I always have a little beef broth on it, but look how gorgeous that is. You see how beautiful that is? So we're gonna serve it, friends, because that's it. That's all. It's really cooked. So the whole work was uh, in the prep, a presentation of it, the prep of it. We're gonna take some of our broccolis in there, put a little bit of, put some of our carrots in there. And mix it up. You put as much or as little as you want, obviously, right? And right there. And this looks gorgeous, doesn't it? And since the vegetables are cooked, all we need now is to heat them up just a little bit. And right there, this is absolutely beautiful. We're going to take a, a plate. I have a plate. I have a plate. And I got this beautiful rice that I cooked. I cooked a, a, a beautiful uh, basmati rice. By the way, the recipe for the basmati rice, you know, cooked it in chicken stock. And the recipe for that is right over there. We got a video on there. Let's take it. Look how beautiful that is. Like I say, you want to make it more sauce? 
You can, you can add a little stock to this and it'll be wonderful. And very simple right there, my friends, look at this, see? Look at that, the beef is gonna be amazing. Put some, uh, check the time to do it nice. I mean, you know, when I have the camera, I always don't have the time to make it look so pretty, right? And at the last minute, what we're gonna do, we're gonna clean up our plate a little bit. And this is looking gorgeous. And then we're gonna do, uh, here you go, put some white sesame seed on there at the end. Or you can put toasted sesame seed on there, or so it'll be also delicious. And this, my friends, let me get a spoon, a spoon, a spoon, a spoon, a fork. Let me get some of it so I can test it. Look how beautiful that looks, friends. And this right there, that'll be amazing. Mmm, mmm, mmm. All of the flavors and, and the meat. It's perfect. You can really test all of those flavors together. I tell you, if you can get a hold of that sauce, friends, remind me, it's really, really cool. Don't have to. A good soy sauce, good oyster sauce will do the trick. All of your flavors are there. It's wonderful. I hope you make it. Thank you for watching. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell, friends. Thanks for watching.